Now that the Euros is over, here's one cool fact from each country's jersey. I learned a lot about history from this kit. As you guys know, or most of you guys that are not from Canada know that the Euros are starting this week. I thought it would be cool to be able to talk about all the jerseys that all the finalists are going to wear. Starting alphabetically with Albania. The more I researched the jersey, the more I actually learned a lot of cool facts about Albania itself. The kit producer for the Albanian national team is Macron. I think Macron did an excellent job with Albania. As you can see, the jersey itself is a simple, modern, classic color jersey with three different colors. Red represents the home, white represents a way jersey, and black represents a third kit. What I like about modern jerseys, I guess like they like to make a simpler jersey, but a really subtle design nod. Macron did really well in this case. As you can see in the torso part, there's actually like this mosaic, subtle detail of the double-headed eagle. But my favorite detail in this jersey is actually the motto that is stitched between the seam. Ti Shipri Mia Ndel. Or you Albania, you make me proud. And it is actually taken from a poem by Naim Frasheri. I just found out that Shipri is what Albanians call Albania. It's like how most of the world call Japan, Japan, but Japanese people call their country Nihon. This year, the kit for Austria is giving me a lot of mixed feelings. This country neighboring Germany is slowly becoming a European powerhouse in football, and it comes to no surprise because they have a lot of amazing players. Their kit supplier is Puma, and personally, I have mixed feelings about them. Sometimes they make really, really good design, and sometimes it's just plain weird. However, this year they chose a more simplistic design for Puma standards at least. Let's talk about our home kit. It's mostly a red jersey with white accents in their collars, and they have this cool design pattern that honors the Jugendstil architecture movement that is kind of famous in Austria around the Art Nouveau movement. After researching it, Jugendstil is basically putting intricate curves and ornate design and otherwise very much plain texture and architecture. This is an example of what a Jugendstil building looks like and this is what their jersey pattern is. I don't see it. However, what I do really like is the away kit jersey. It's a very simple white kit that has peppermint and black accents all around. I do really like that all over the chest you can see the subtle symmetrical design that represents the wings of an eagle. If you guys don't know, the logo of Austria is an eagle. And this design is a nod for the people of Austria and their love of nature and their call to adventure. So what do you guys think? Do you think Austria is going to do well for the Euros? This jersey pays homage to childhood, or my childhood at least. We've reached B for Belgium, aptly named the Red Devils, hence why we see the iconic red shirt throughout the years for their home kit. I think Adidas did a great job this year compared to last year where they weirdly enough chose flames on the sleeve and for a country so rich in culture and heritage. For the away kit last year, they took inspiration from Tomorrowland. But enough about last year's jersey, let's talk about this year's one. For their home kit, they decided to use a burgundy looking red with diamond details and black and gold accent. I think this is a more elegant look compared to previous years where the red is much more hot red. But enough about the home kit. Let's talk about the beautiful away kit that pays homage to Belgium's best contribution to pop culture, Tintin. If you guys don't know who Tintin is, he is a comic book character illustrated by the legendary comic book artist Herge. And Tintin himself is a teenager that travels all around the world to solve mysteries. One time he arrived in the moon, and another time he was in the submarine that looks like shark. I think Belgium killed it with their away kit, with the blue shirt, again with diamond details all around, brown shorts, and white socks. Adidas specifically added a collar to this jersey so that the whole set will look exactly like Tintin's shirt. I think Belgium can actually win the Euros this year if they only wear their away kit all tournament long. But what do you guys think? Comment below! This country's football jersey is actually inspired by a completely different game. Can you believe we've entered a fourth country, Croatia? I don't. And Croatia as a finalist is always interesting because even though they're not known as a global football powerhouse like Spain, Germany, or Eng <laughs> England, 
they always do well in each international tournament. Their best run was in 2018, where they got runner-up for the FIFA World Cup. For the last couple of years, their supplier has been Nike, and each year they always done the traditional checkerboard pattern for all their jerseys. And for this year's home kit, Nike did the innovative design of making the checkerboard pattern bigger. I guess they had more creative freedom for the blue away kit and they made a checkerboard pattern diagonal. A cool detail for both jerseys is that in the collar they have the Croatian word for family. But I want to talk about the reason why Croatia used a checkerboard pattern for their jerseys. It turns out it is inspired by the history of their coat of arms. Back then, their king Steven Drizlov settled a global dispute with the Venetian Dodge through three games of checkers which he all won. And as a sign of gratitude, he made the checkerboard pattern the coat of arms of Croatia. It's really hard to like Puma as a kit supplier these days. We've entered our fifth country, which is Czech Republic. This country is always a dark horse for each Euros, and it's come to no surprise because they have really good players like Patrick Schick. But I just feel Puma as a kit supplier for Czech Republic really missed the mark this year. For the home kit, Czech Republic always goes with a red jersey. And I'm not lying, this is according to the website description. This year, it has an amazing subtle pattern. Like they don't even explain what the subtle pattern is. And if you go into details, it's literally just the Czech Republic logo repeated. To be honest, it really is not that memorable. But what makes me really disappointed in Puma is actually the way kit. Because look at it. It's literally a template jersey. Like it feels like Puma forgot they needed a design for the, the way kit and they just chose the most basic template jersey and slapped the Czech Republic logo on the chest and call it a day. This jersey costs 124 bucks. Like, do you wanna pay that much just for a white shirt? I've seen Sunday football teams that has better jerseys than the away kit here. And there's no other intricate details. The only thing I can find is just a Czech Republic flag in the back. So guys, I've already created the perfect jersey design that connects the past and the future of Denmark. Oh, are we taking inspiration from our rich and cultural heritage? Uh-uh-uh. It'll be pixels you sure you want to go with that pattern because you know we have a lot of classical traditional danish pattern huh? no nope. it'll be pixels um how about we choose a landmark or architecture that we can pay homage to pixels or how about pixels okay at least can we do something different for the goalkeeper jersey Yes, for the goalkeeper jersey, I've already taken inspiration of one of the greatest figures of our time. The zombie from Minecraft. Pixelated. Pixels! I'm not a big fan of the English football team. I think whenever they do well in a tournament, their fans get cocky, and just for them to get humbled in the final, it's like the epitome of building you up to bring you down. And I was never really a big fan of English jersey design. I think their white kit just looks too simple, or sometimes they look more like a polo shirt or tennis shirt. However, I do think Nike did a stellar job for the kit this year. For the home jersey, it's always a white base. But for this year, they have like this purple and pink accent that actually makes it very, very elegant. And if you zoom into the chest, you can see, say it with me, subtle patterns of embroidery that makes it feel even more expensive. For the away kit, they have this like dark purple grayish color. But my favorite thing is they made the three lines in gold color. For the side panel, they have this multicolor pattern. It just shows that you can still make an elegant looking kit, but have fun with it. But it is not England if it doesn't come with controversies. Namely, the St. George Cross in the back of the home kit. It is updated with like a multicolor look, and a lot of people complain that you don't mess with the flag. I personally don't care, but I understand with changes, there's always gonna be a pushback. I think the biggest L from this year is actually the goalkeeper jersey that looks like a melted orange popsicle in summer. France did something right. I used to be a really big fan of the French team, especially when Zidane was playing, but I was a little bit heartbroken when they decided to move from Adidas to Nike. From really cool experimental designs, they shifted to clean, simple, and for me a bit boring. But this year, I think Nike did a really good job with both kits. For the home kit, it's always blue, hence their nickname, Le Bleu. And you know how a lot of teams use a darker shade of color to show elegance or modernity? I actually really like the shade of blue they used this year. It really pops out. And also, they have a nod to the French flag throughout accents on the jersey, namely the collar. 
But the Awaken though, I really like it because they have this like subtle lines going down and it transitions from red to blue. What's really cool as well, the lines actually go down all the way to the shorts. The biggest change from previous year is actually not in the jersey itself, but the logo of the French Federation. Usually they go for a monochromatic look, but this year they chose a golden full color rooster. And it really pops up, especially in the blue jersey. Overall, I really like both kits and I actually might buy it. But yeah, no complaints. Did Macron copy the template to make Georgia's jersey? I'm actually supporting this country for the Euros this year because I think they can be a dark horse in this tournament. They have a lot of great players like Faris Kalia who won with Napoli last year and Georgia Mamardishvili who plays goalie in the best team in Spain, Valencia. But let's talk about the jersey. This year it's supplied by Macron who's slowly becoming one of my favorite kit producers. The home jersey has a white base with red vertical lines going down that is cut in the middle so you can put the numbers. And the away jersey kind of follows the same template but it has a black base color and the third jersey is just a red jersey all around. For the subtle patterns in all three jerseys, they have all this cross, kind of almost like a polka dot pattern. And this is taken from the Jordan flag. The biggest change from previous years, they just changed the FA logo from this to a knight slaying a dragon. Now I feel Wales is gonna be really scared playing against Georgia. My biggest gripe is actually not about the design, but if you see Albania's kit, which is also produced by Micron, the color template almost copies it to a T. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Here are a couple of fun facts about the jerseys Germany is gonna wear for the Euros this year. Fact number one. For the home kit, even though it looks like someone shot a thermal gun in the sleeves, it is actually inspired by the 1994 World Cup team. Hence, if you zoom into the sleeves, you can actually see the gradient diamond pattern which it was inspired from. Fact number two, Germany actually had to redesign the number 44 typeface because it kind of reminded people of an old paramilitary logo that Germany's trying to disassociate from their history. Fact number three, for the first time ever, Germany chose a hot pink color template for their away kit. This is actually inspired by the 1994 World Cup team goalkeeper jersey. Hence the diamond patterns you see all over the chest. Fact number four, some people say that this away kit color palette is oddly similar to AC Milan's away jersey this year. The supplier for AC Milan's away kit is Adidas' rival, Puma. Mm -hmm. And the final fun fact is this pink away kit is actually the fastest selling jersey in Germany's history. What do you guys think about this fun fact? Did I miss anything? Do you guys like the jerseys they're gonna wear? Like, comment, and subscribe. Here are a couple of fun facts about Hungary's jersey for the Euro this year. Fact number one, their home jersey always have a red base color with green and white colors for accents. Fact number two, for the away kit, they use a white base color with red and green accents. And what I like is in the side swipes there, you can see the Hungarian flag. Fact number three, behind the jersey, you can see the words Majorzak, which means Hungary in Hungarian. Fact number four, not only do they use the FA badge, but they also put the coat of arms in their jersey. Fact number five, this jersey is unfortunately just a template jersey that Adidas played around with the color with. In a year where a lot of teams are experimenting with different patterns and colors, this just looks so plain, simple, and boring. Honestly, Adidas has been guilty of doing this to Hungary for the last couple years. The best design I could find for Hungary from Adidas is just this away kit that has a Hungarian flag in the chest. But even that still looks so basic. What do you guys think? Do you guys like what Adidas did for Hungary this year? Here are a couple of fun facts about the jersey Italy is gonna wear in 2024. Fun fact number one! The home kit for Italy is always blue, hence our nickname, Gli Azzurri. This is taken from the House of Savoy that united Italy in 1861. Fun fact number two! Both the home and away jersey has subtle design of I on the chest and this is taken from the first letter of their country's name. Fun fact number three! Both the jerseys pass design nods to the Italian flag. For the home kit, you can see it in the shoulder stripes. And for the away kit, you can see the red and green in the side accents and the white makes the base color. Fun fact number four, behind the jerseys you can see the word L'Italia ci amo, which means Italy is calling. This is taken from their national anthem. I personally think Adidas did a pretty good job this year. However, it is really hard to make a follow-up kit from last year's jersey 
where the home kit is literally a piece of art with the bespoke detail of the Italian flag going down the side. And the away kit is literally inspired by white Italian marble. Like I subconsciously think I cannot run into any of their defenders because I'm gonna break all the bones in my body. But what do you guys think? Do you think Italy is gonna win the Euro again this year? So Nike, I know throughout the years you made some really good jerseys for us. So what's your design this year? Yes, yeah, so for this year's Dutch home jersey, I've taken inspiration from the people who build our homes and our futures. Australian trades people. Uh, well, what better way to honor Dutch people and Europeans in general than a one hour smoke break than drinking all day after work? Okay, that does make sense. And if you travel to Australia with a working holiday visa wearing this jersey, you'll immediately get a job in the trades. My cousin is traveling to Australia on a working holiday visa. But what about the away kit? Yeah, so for the Dutch away kit, I've taken inspiration from one of the great Dutch infrastructure. Oh, let me guess, is it our amazing dams and canals? Uh, it'll be the public bus seat graphics. Hey guys, today let's learn on how to become a jersey designer for a European country if you work for a multi-billion dollar company like Nike. So step number one, you want to choose a country where the FA logo is either an eagle or a lion. For this example, let's choose Poland. Step two, research Poland's rich and cultural heritage. This is important because as a designer, you need a lot of inspiration. Step three, throw it away because you work for Nike and it does not align with Nike's minimalistic principles. Step four, you want to choose a jersey you already made years back. For this example, let's choose Poland 2020. Step five, download Photoshop. I've already have Photoshop open right here. And this is the most important step right here, guys. Choose the lasso tool. And you know, I want to do a crazy redesign for Poland this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lasso tool. I'm going to choose the Nike logo here. And I'm going to move it right there and i think i'm gonna refine some details but there you go we are done designing the jersey for poland 2024 don't forget to like comment and subscribe to get more tips on how to become jersey designers thanks guys nike simple isn't always better and I'm talking about how you designed the national shirts for Portugal. This year, the home jersey is a disappointment. Once again, it's just a red shirt with some accents. Or in my world, boring. But the away jersey, it's a work of art. It's inspired by old Portuguese azulejo architecture. And it's beautiful. Therefore, this design idea should have been the principle on how Nike designed its national football shirts in general. And Nike is always guilty of doing this in Portugal. Their home jersey is always a basic red shirt. But their away jersey is so beautiful and intricate. I mean, look at these jerseys they produce for the Women's World Cup. The away kit is so cool. Therefore, maybe it's not hard to believe that Nike is trying to get the best of both worlds. The simple and the intricate. Comment below what do you guys think. Here are some fun facts about the Romanian jersey. The sleeve is the Romanian flag. That's it. Why Scotland's jersey is one of the best this year. To understand Scotland is to understand this design, the tartan pattern. Design has always been important for cultural identity. Take this patterns from Japan, Ukraine, or where I come from Indonesia that has the Batik pattern. So what is tartan? The pattern is originally used as a sign of masculinity and to identify different clans in Scotland. These days, it is adapted in a wide spectrum and very important for everyday Scotland fashion wear. It is also used for important events such as weddings or supporting the Scottish national team, hence why the fans are called the Tartan Army. Like every 6th of April, they have National Tartan Day. I think Adidas did a great job of giving a modern look to the tartan pattern and the yellow highlights really make it pop. Even the modern take on the Scottish flag in the back looks pretty cool. And it didn't cause a lot of controversy, unlike its neighbors. As for the way jersey is just meant. We are Puma, we are original, and we're one of the best shirt designers in the world. So for this year's Serbia jersey, we've decided to take inspiration of the eagle wings and put it all over your jersey. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Here it is.
we don't see. And for the way, kid, we decide to take inspiration from the Volja Varos, the devil town in southern Serbia that has unique mountainous topography. Oh yeah, that's a cool idea. But only on the sleeves. And you know Czech Republic? Yeah, we love Czech Republic. Well, their jerseys are exactly the same. We are Puma. Original. Here are a couple of fun facts about Slovakia. Fact number one, the capital, Bratislava, is the only capital in the world that borders two countries, Austria and Hungary. Fact number two, Nike once again disappoints in designing the national football jersey for Slovakia because look at it, it's just a template kit. Fact number three, Andy Warhol's parents actually migrated from Slovakia. Fact number four, the most popular sports in Slovakia is tennis, hockey, and football. Which makes me wonder why Nike puts in so much effort in designing beautiful hockey jerseys, but no effort whatsoever for the football team. Fact number five, automotive is the backbone of the Slovakian economy. Fact number six, Nike just literally slapped on badges on the template kit and called it a day. How a country's topography affects its design identity. In a world where most countries' coat of arm involve mystical animals, Slovenia is a rare oddity where they have a landmark in their coat of arms. And this landmark is the Triglav Mountain, the highest peak of Slovenia. And over the years, they incorporated Triglav Mountains their football kits. And my god, it's beautiful. So god only knows why Nike decided to minimize the Triglav Mountain this year and made it feel like someone ran me over with an off-road dirt bike. This is a football kit review of Spain in under 30 seconds. The home kit is red with some accents of yellow and apparently some subtle patterns of sand. I don't see it. And for the away kit, they chose the color template of, I'm not joking, Lay's Dill Pickle. And like Dill Pickle, some people might like it, some people might not. Cool details about Switzerland's jersey in under 30 seconds. Cool detail number one, the red home kit has subtle details of Edelweiss blooms. It definitely does not look like barbed wire. Cool detail number two, the white away kit is inspired by the Jungfrau Joch station in the Swiss Alps. Cool detail number three is behind the shirt you can actually see the word Swiss written in four different national languages that is spoken in Switzerland. If countries follow Turkey's design. So this is the home kit for Turkey this year and I actually really like the simple flag going upon the chest. But that made me think, what if other countries follow this design philosophy. Here's Spain, Brazil, and Argentina. This is Canada, and I think this is a work of art. Japan might look too simplistic, but I also made a blue version. Algeria, I just put the colors down in the middle. England, I just made the cross really big. This is Colombia, and it also worked for Ecuador and Venezuela. If there's any rivalry, I'm so sorry. For Kazakhstan, I just decided to go for a monochromatic look that really highlights the symbol of the country. Why this country's jersey caused international controversy. I, of course, am talking about Ukraine. And the controversy comes from the illustration of Ukraine on the chest because it includes the Crimean Peninsula that was annexed by Russia in 2014. Russia, of course, lodged a complaint to UEFA and UEFA said, no, the graphic may stay. However, the motto inside the shirt, which is Heroyam Slava, needs to be replaced because it is usually involved with military activity. These days, the most updated version of the jersey is replaced by, of course, the illustration of Ukraine. What do you